Hey guys, my name is Kitty. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be another weekly reading vlog. So today's the 1st of April. So happy April, everybody. Um, I finished a book, <laughs> but I mean, I read the majority of it in March. I just finished it in April. Um, but I finished up one of my Spiffbo books and then I started another Spiffbo book. But again, I'm doing a separate vlog for that one. So I'll just mention them in that one. But I have like five more books for Spiffbo to read before April ends and I started one of those five um, and I'm very excited about it. It's a very much just a straight fantasy which I'm very excited because I feel like I've been reading a lot of fantasy romance and it's kind of been a while since I've read like a just solid fantasy book so I'm very excited and some of the Swiftful books have not felt as fantasy as I would have liked so I'm excited about this one. This was Cassidy's pick so I'm very excited and today actually the our fantasy 2024 bingo card was released and I have I haven't pulled up on my computer I was literally just looking at it and seeing what like the parameters were I'm gonna do this on the easy mode <laughs> I'm not gonna make my life harder um but I do think that I could fit my some of my spiffbo reads into this which is very exciting and I actually have just I have the perfect one for bards um, because I want to read more from R.K. Ashwick, who was the author of Arrival Most Vile, which is also a Spiffbo 9 finalist, which I'm obsessed with. And they actually have a, a book about a bard. So I'm just like, oh my god, perfect one for that. I need to order my copy on Amazon because I loved Arrival Most Vile. I want to own that one. Um, so high chance that I'm, I'm going to love the rest of their books, so... I want to own them physically but anyways what I'm going to do first is actually make my little our fantasy bingo board in my reading journal um there's a space opera prompt too which is also perfect because I've been meaning to get back into the expanse series which is a space opera I'm uh, I want to start the second book relatively soon so that's also perfect for um the bingo board I have a couple of books that I'm already fitting into um the our fantasy bingo card so very excited um i'm <laughs> i'm really excited about it i feel like it's gonna be a really good time we'll see once i actually decide to get into the reading what i'm gonna read but i just wanted to get this vlog started um and talk a little bit about, about the our fantasy bingo card but once i actually pick a book that i'm definitely going to read i will give you guys an update so that's gonna be it for me i'm gonna set up my our fantasy bingo card in here and I'll update you guys once I have picked a book to read. I want to show you guys some books because I received a beautiful, beautiful book yesterday. I want to show it to you. And then also I got another set of very beautiful books that I also want to show you. So we're going to start with an unboxing real quick and then we'll get into the reading updates. Okay, so the beautiful book that I got yesterday, this I pre-ordered. It was a special edition for this book. And this book is definitely on my like top books of 2024 and it's also like one of my favorite monster romances ever and that is Whispers of the Deep by Emma Ham. Look at this gorgeous book. Look at these. Oh. <laughs> when I saw these sprayed edges I was like yes definitely buying this right now. It's so fucking gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. If you've never heard me talking about this book, this book is basically following this woman here and she is an engineer um, and in this world humans have basically left land. It became uninhabitable for them so humanity basically went under the sea and now they have all these structures built on the bottom on the seafloor. If you've ever played Bioshock, imagine Bioshock, um, but while they moved down to the bottom of the ocean they also have had a lot of problems with the mermaids because the mermaids they see them as an invasive species um humans are gross and are contaminating and polluting their environment so the humans and the mermaids at odds so in this book we know that mermaids exist they are very ferocious deadly super strong super fast creatures we follow this couple she's an engineer one day she's fixing something that broke and he sees her and he basically <laughs> tries to kill her um, and they end up in a situation where they both have to put aside their prejudices, save each other, and then just like move on. So they do that, they save each other, and both of them are like, thank god we never have to see this person ever again. Mortal enemies, don't talk to me type shit. Uh, but guess what? They have to see each other again. He gets tasked with kidnapping our engineer, 
taking her hostage and finding out every single thing she knows about the humans so that he can take them down. Tell me you don't want to read that. Tell me you don't want to read that right now. <laughs> it's so good. If you've ever played Bioshock 1 and 2, you need to you need to read this. Like it's going to hit every single Bioshock vibe you've ever wanted. I loved this so much. Um, so yeah, of course, I had to pre-order the special edition because it's fucking gorgeous. I needed it. I needed it. Um, but yeah, let me, that's the premise of the book. Let me finish showing you guys the pre-order. It has a reversible dust jacket with his gorgeous art. Honestly, the sliding does not do this print justice because this scene is fucking gorgeous. Like, oh my god. Absolutely stunning. And then the naked book is also absolutely gorgeous. Look at it. Oh my god. Look at that. Oh my god, it's so fucking beautiful. Um, this edition is signed. Look at this art. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, indie authors really just do it the fucking best. Like, they literally never fucking miss. Like, with their special editions, like, oh my god. Like, I swear, I've seen some special editions from like fairy loot illumicrate that i'm just like mid indie authors indie authors they know what they're doing oh my god absolutely stunning i ordered it with print a print pack because i was like i need i need prints from this so we have this one which is what the reversible dust jacket looks like look at that scene like look at oh my god tell me you don't want to read this book right now oh <laughs> it's so stunning and then we also have this one. And I do have a not safe for work one. I can't show you. Well, we'll just cover it up and you guys can use your imagination. Look, oh, so cute, so cute. And then it did come with a bookmark, which I am using for the book I'm currently reading, but look how fucking gorgeous this bookmark is. Oh my God, I swear artists. <sighs> Like, tell me this isn't... Oh my god, I, can't, I literally can't believe it. But it's so, so, so stunning. If you have ever wanted to read a mermaid monster romance, if you've never even read a mermaid monster romance, I didn't even... I didn't know I was missing a mermaid monster romance, but let me tell you, this shit is magical. Like, this is magical as fuck. Like, and it's so fucking funny, and it's just Bioshock in a book. It's... Oh my god, it's amazing. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of Whispers of the Deep. The second book, I think it's coming out in May. I'm literally gonna go feral. Like, when that book drops, I'm reading immediately. Literally can't fucking wait. Anyways, yes, this is my petition, my formal request that you all read Whispers of the Deep. If you like monster romance, please, please, please. It's so good. I literally made a space specifically for it on my monster romance shelf. It's just so pretty. Like it just needs to be out and about. Like I can't hide her, she's too gorgeous. So then I also ordered these three books. I mentioned them in my last vlog, but I wanna show them to you because they're so fucking gorgeous. And I'm literally so excited I, I, I started one of them. I got the rest of the Haven Ever After books by Hazel Mack. Um, so this is the second one, which is Tangling with Trolls. This is one I'm currently reading. But look at this. Look at the art for these books. I'm telling you, indie authors, indie authors. Oh my god, literally. Look at the back. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, it's so fucking gorgeous. Um, so yeah, we have this one, obviously. Troll. And then we have the third book, which is Partying with Pixies. Um, look at, oh my god, look at that. It's, oh my god, it's so fucking pretty. So this is the third book. Obviously we have a gargoyle and a pixie. And then this is the one that I'm like, <laughs> when I get to this book, because I apologize in advance for the person that I will become once I get to this book. And that is Waltzing with Witches. And this is the vampire one. Look at him. Oh my god. I'm not usually into the blonde man thing, but like for him, I would make an exception. I would. And she's so stunning. Oh my god. Look at the background because he lives in a castle. Like look at the background. Oh my god. Like you're fucking joking. <laughs> you're fucking joking. These books are so fucking cute. I'm just like such an indie 
I'm a, just an indie author fan. Like, I'm sorry, but, like, they are literally killing it. Okay? Killing it. Traditionally published could never. Traditionally published could never, ever, ever hit like these. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. So, for my reading update, I have started... No, not this one. My bad. <laughs> this one. Tangling with Trolls. This is the second book. Follows the second sister. I'm only 16 pages in. I literally started it late last night um, because I got these yesterday and I was like I went to my yoga class and then when I came home I was like nobody talked to me I want to read this but then I got really tired and I fell asleep but I will be getting back to it today and I mean I'm pretty sure I'll finish it <laughs> today or tomorrow because I devour Monster Man so fast so I'm just gonna give you a synopsis of like the first book because this is the second and I don't want to spoil it but essentially the story follows three sisters one of them discovers this old map at a thrift store and they decide that they want to do a girls weekend trip and go to this, you know, town that they found at a thrift store. And once they end up finding the town and they end up discovering that it's a town full of monsters. And the first book follows one of the sisters and now we're following the second sister. And I literally can't wait. I'm so excited for this one. This is going to be my first troll monster romance, which I'm just like, so so excited he lives in a cave under a bridge just i love it <laughs> i love it i love it so that's it for now i will update you guys once i get a little bit more reading done so i am now 126 pages into this and this one's definitely like this one's definitely more smutty than the first one <laughs> but it's like it's like a different type of smutty which is really entertaining honestly um, but yeah, so far it's just following the second sister with like her like respective love interest. Um, and it's a lot more focused on the magic of the world and other magic that's going along with it. And there's also like a sports tournament going on within this book. And the main character of the troll, he's actually part of the team. Like he's not a professional athlete, but he's like part of the team, which I think is really fun um when they have like that sports romance-esque to it but so far it's been really fun i'm really enjoying it um i'm very excited to see where this is gonna go and we've been getting so many scenes with morgan and the keeper which are the characters from the fourth book and oh my god like guys like i'm binging this series like in this vlog i'll probably read the next books because i need to get to the fourth book like now like i love morgan so much she's so oh my God, i just love her she's an older sister i'm the older sister so it's just like we're like we see eye to eye and the vampire oh my God, and their dynamic is just so like clashing all the time that i'm just like oh my god i can't fucking wait for that book so i might be binging the series in this vlog i'm sorry it's happening um <laughs> like i'm literally already like halfway through and I'm loving it and I'm eating it up um but I did get an Amazon order this one took a while to arrive to me I feel like it took like a week and a half ish um oh my god it's so pretty um this is my Patreon book club pick and that is When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker um I've been hearing nothing but good things about this so I did want to get an actual copy she is so chunky um how long is this this one is 690 pages oh my god yeah she's chunky and she's like very small i really like i don't know i really like how this feels um but yeah this is gonna be those chapter headers oh sick this is gonna be the april pick for um my patreon book club uh, the Hellraiser tier, and I'm so freaking excited. Oh my god, uh, there's so much information in the front. Oh my god, I can't wait to read this. There's a whole ass glossary. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Yeah, so anyways, I'm gonna be reading this in April, and I wanted to order my own copy, so finally arrived. I'm so excited about this. But anyways, that's that. I just wanted to give a little update before I finish this because probably the next time I check in, I will be done with it. Um, but yeah, so far I'm really having a lot of fun. The series is just really fun. Um, like it's, oh, it's so funny and it's so corny at times and it's so ridiculous, but like I'm eating it up. Like I'm eating it up. So 
I'm gonna continue reading this. I will check in once I'm done with Tangling with Trolls. Hey guys, so today is Thursday and I did end up finishing Tangling with Trolls yesterday by Hazel Mack. Um, this was really fun. <laughs> this was... This was smuttier than I really expected. I found out that Hazel Mack also writes dark romance under a different author name. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Because this was definitely like Dom Daddy Brat like thing going on with the smut. And I was like, oh, okay. It was fun. It was fun. Um, but yeah, it was definitely smuttier than the first. Um, I feel like in this one, we got a lot more world build. We got to learn a lot about different people's powers. And then also like how the system works and we also get to see a lot more of the keeper and morgan and like honestly like every time i see them any interaction i get like i'm just like going more and more and more feral that like i know by the fourth book i'm gonna be like insane <laughs> like i'm gonna be going crazy for <laughs> because any interaction i get with them i'm just like oh my god like oh my god i literally cannot wait can't wait anyways this one we also get a little bit more information about like the conflict that connects all the books what's going on there's a lot of more world build i really am interested in understanding more about this little town and i feel like the element of this other thing happening in the background really adds like dimension to the story like so it's not just like a cutesy little romance novel like there's something else that's kind of going on in the background that is like substantially important um but obviously still the focus really remains like on the couples themselves um but again i did like them they were really funny um, there was some scenes in here that i was cackling um but again like the writing is like super super cheesy like super corny at times but like i like that in this and like i don't think i would be able to handle this type of writing in like anything that wasn't a monster romance you know what i mean like for my monster romance like expectations like they're just so different for the genre than anything else but i eat it up and like, i don't say this is in a negative way because like it just works so well with these books like there's literally no other writing style that would work with the story and like i just eat it up i eat it up it's so fucking cute it's so wholesome i love watching the couples um <laughs> yeah it was just it was a lot of fun it's a lot of fun my first troll monster romance i mean i'm not mad about it and i would be interested in some more troll romances i'll tell you that this shit <laughs> okay it was crazy so i finished that up um so obviously what am i gonna read next <laughs> of course we're gonna go with parting with pixie so this is the third book in the series and obviously follows these two gargoyle and a pixie i heard that there's like a chase scene in here that's like absolutely amazing and i was like thank you jesus sorry my camera was crooked sorry about that i love chasing scenes i think they're so fun but apparently there's one in here and i was like okay and this is like a friends to lovers type of romance and it follows this character aloe who has a son and he has like this whole backstory um and then our pixie which is miriam and look at how fucking cute she is oh my god um but yeah this world has just been so magical and i'm enjoying spending so much time in this world like i literally love it so much it's so fun um i do think that the vampire book is gonna be the one that i give five stars to like i just have this feeling that like it's just gonna give me everything i want because this the relationship between the characters the way it's being set up and then also morgan being like the older sister feeling out of place feeling like she doesn't belong like all of that i already know i'm gonna fucking eat it up um and then yeah i've heard i've heard crazy things about that book i'm not gonna lie like i've heard some crazy things that i'm just like I can't wait. I literally can't wait. But I am enjoying my journey there. Because like I said, there's a lot of like plot going on in the background that I'm really liking. And there's a lot of magic. It's like super, super magical, even though it's like a small town, you know, little romance. I was dead ass when I told you guys I'm going to binge the series. <laughs> it's been a while since I've like binged a series like this, like fully just like one book after the other after the other. Last time I did this, I think was with Ice Planet. Um, so I'm having a lot of fun. Just kind of boom, 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 boom. Like, oh, 
it's so much fun so i'm gonna keep reading those and uh once i have a reading update i will let you guys know hey guys so excuse the lighting it's really gloomy outside and i put a lamp here i don't know i wanted to give you guys a reading update on parting with pixies um i'm almost done with this i am 192 pages in i have this much left this is probably where we're gonna get some conflict and some something happening to our leading lady type thing um i'm very excited i have been really enjoying this um again just really fun very magical little town we've been getting more background more information about the world and of course we've been seeing some interactions with morgan and the keeper and i literally can't wait i'm gonna start that shit today i know i am when i finish this immediately immediately <laughs> into the second book i mean not second fourth book waltzing with witches i need it guys i need it desperately so yeah that's how it's going i'm having a blast i have literally nothing else to say um just that i'm having a great time <laughs> this is i'm having a great time i'm loving the gargoyle shit she's a pixie that's fun um it's just all around a very happy time and i'm loving it so that's it i'm gonna go <laughs> I'll update you guys once I'm done with this and probably when I have started Watching with Witches so I can give you guys like two updates at once. Um, but yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> I can't wait. I'll update you guys a little bit later. Hey guys, so today is Sunday and I, <laughs> I, wow, I finished. I finished the series. Um, so I ended up finishing Parting with the Pixies, obviously, and I ended up giving this one four stars as well. This one was so much fun. It's so Halloween-y. Like, the vibes in this are just, like, Halloween all around. It's so, so cute. Um, and yeah, <laughs> so much. Yeah, a lot happens. And then I finally got to read Waltzing with Witches. I finished this in a day. I think I read it in, like, six hours. Um, and... I literally could not put the book down. Like, you could not tear me from this fucking book. Um, oh my god. <laughs> it was so good. It was so... It was everything I knew that this book was gonna be. And I fucking devoured it. I give it five stars. My tabs. The reds are just, like, for, like, cute moments. And that's, like, this book, like... Oh my god. This book was, like, an emotional roller coaster because it was, like hit after hit after hit and i was like i'm literally crying right now like i cannot handle anything else like please <laughs> like hazel back please like please i was just hit after hit after hit um but like the romance was just absolutely stunning and I was just like losing it like I was losing my fucking mind reading this like the reveals that we get on the keeper literally like my heart broke like three fucking times reading this book like I was just like destroyed after it I was like I I like could not like comprehend like it was just so like oh my god it was so much but the end was so cute and the relationship was so fucking cute and this was so smutty like this is definitely the smuttiest of the four books so far and like this is a vampire fucking romance bitch like this is blood play galore oh my god like i was like this is exactly what's lacking a lot of vampire like romances is like there's not a huge emphasis on blood and i just feel like we need more of that you know for a vampire romance like we need blood to be like way more of a like of a key theme and in this one there's so much blood play like there's some things that happened that i was like like my jaw unhinged <laughs> and, like that bitch was in hell like i was like oh my god like whoa but it was it was a lot but it was so fun and the smutty scenes were like what the fuck but i was so like i was like damn okay like whoa it was so fun it was heartbreaking it was adorable <laughs> there's just so much stuff that happens in this book that i'm just like god damn but oh my god like i loved it it was literally everything i needed from a vampire monster romance i feel like i don't know if like i'm the only person that has this weird this like distinction right maybe if you read monster romance and vampire romance like you get it because like vampires are technically considered like monsters or creatures um they would i think be 
considered into the monster romance but some vampire romances feel a little bit more fantasy romance than monster romance don't know if like anyone else like agrees with me on this but like let's say when we were talking about like the crown of niaxia series like there are vampires but those vampires i feel like don't really they're not like that monstrous like they don't feel like monster romance they feel very much like a fan row but this one felt like a monster romance with vampires not like I don't know like as monsters over being like a fan row does that make sense does anyone else feel like there's a there's a distinction between those two genres involving the same thing that is vampires but like the way that each author does it like either pushes it into the monster romance or pushes it to fan fantasy romance let me know if you guys feel the same way but this is definitely more into the monster romance side of it it's not really a fan row and i don't think i would recommend this for people that like vampire romance in the fantasy romance side i think this is perfect for people that actually read monster romance and enjoy monster romance because like <laughs> i can imagine recommending this to some of my fan row friends and like they would just be like N absolutely not so i would only recommend this to vampire girlies that are also monster romance girlies okay this book is for you it's everything you've ever wanted trust me when i say that it's everything you've ever wanted and honestly it's everything you didn't even know you wanted because <laughs> it was it was a lot like it was a lot but it was so fun and again this was like an emotional roller coaster like i was sobbing like oh my god and if i didn't say obviously i gave this one five stars of course i gave this one five stars it broke my heart it put it back together it gave me a warm hug and then uh, you know a lot of things <laughs> happened but um i loved it this was this was literally the book for me this was the book for me this was the romance for me morgan like oh my god she's just so me i love her so so much and just like she's so different from the rest of the women in this series like the way that she goes about things like she's just so different she's so like angry and she's just so like bossy and she, i just love her you guys like i truly love 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 her she was my favorite of the sisters i'm obsessed the keeper bro i like i said i usually don't like male main characters that are blonde but for him I would make an exception and you know what who else i would also make an exception for is adrian from king of Island blood those are like the two blondies that i will like i'll let you slide you know like i'll forgive the blonde hair um but the keeper oh my god <laughs> oh my god morgan and the keeper holy shit that was crazy i loved every second of it i literally loved every second of it so much so that i've decided that i'm going to do a journal spread for waltzing with witches in my reading journal so i'm getting ready like i've literally gone to through pinterest i've set up my little mood board for it i even have like the perfect song for this book like i think i nailed it the perfect song for this book i have it like i have it and if you want to know what it is because like maybe it'll make you want to read this book but you have to go through the series like you can't just read this one you gotta go through a series but it's shut up kiss me by angel olsen that song is like the perfect song for morgan and the keeper like i'm just a hundred percent sure that that is like the perfect song for them and i'm a hundred percent sure that at one point morgan dedicates this song to him because like it's literally perfect so i did make a little spotify code for it so that i can put it in my reading journal it's gonna be a whole thing i'm <laughs> so excited but that journal spread i'm gonna film for patreon i've decided that's gonna be my april journaling spread for my top tier so i'm getting my 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 images ready i made my qr code and all i have to do now is just like film me putting it together i'm literally so 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 excited oh i love getting such good books like i love the feeling of a five star book oh it's so special like you just know it you just know it when a book is gonna be five stars you just like there's literally no way to describe it i literally could not logically tell you why a book is gonna be five stars but like there's just a feeling that i get while i'm reading a book that i'm just like motherfucking five stars like 
<laughs> I just know it. And this one gave me that. I mean, from the beginning, when I saw these two interacting, I was like, when their book comes up, that's the book I'm going to give five stars to. And I was like, 100% right. Because I gave this shit five stars because I ate this up. Oh my god, I loved it so much. I even have like tabs up here. <sighs> it was a great time. I literally 1010 recommend the um, Haven Ever After series by Hazel Mack. If you like monster romance, holy shit, it's so fucking cute it's so cute and the sixth no fifth fifth book is coming out i think soon they revealed the um the cover what is it called actually let me look it up i want to tell you guys what it's called because it, the cover is so fucking cool and that one is a shit it's gonna be a shifter romance and i think the male the female lead is latine which i'm like bitch holy shit don't tell me that i'm already falling in love with her um oh my god i think it's called like wrestling oh yeah wrestling with werewolves um and it is the fifth book oh my god like the cover is gorgeous it is gonna be an age gap romance look at that cover oh my god i'm so freaking excited she's a rock star she's the shifter princess and he's the dad's best friend <laughs> loving it can't wait for the fifth book I need the book physically because all the co all the covers are absolutely gorgeous. Like, I love them so much. But, yeah. What a time to be alive and being able to read about vampires doing vampiric things never gets old. <laughs> it's truly, monster romance never gets old for me. What I'm going to do next, because I kind of want to keep this vlog going because I feel like it's not long enough for what I would like. I think what I'm going to do is add another book into this one. I don't know what I'm going to read yet. I'll come back once I have a reading update for whatever book I decide to read. But yeah, 1010 <laughs> recommend binging Monster Romance series. Honestly, I've never been happier. I've literally never been happier. So love that for me. I'm going to go. Um, I'll update you guys a little bit later. Hey guys, so today is Sunday and I... Am, no, it's not Sunday. Oh my god, it's Monday. <laughs> it's Monday. Um, anyway, today's Monday. <laughs> wow. And I wanted to um, include one more book in this vlog, as I had mentioned before. I decided to ask my Patreon, see what they think I should read. And everybody chose Paradise Rot by Jenny Haval? Havel? I don't know how to say that. But this is, I think, a like queer sexual awakening horror, I think, is how I've heard this book being pitched as. I'm so excited. I heard it's like super weird and very trippy and I'm so, so, so excited. Oh, it's a translated work. I did not know this was translated. Oh, that's interesting. So yeah. I'm going to be reading this next. It's really short, so I feel like this will be really easy to include in here. But I do want to include another book in here because this book I've heard, I've been hearing everybody talk about recently and everybody's really enjoying it. And I have a really beautiful special edition. So I'm just like, I should read it while I'm in the mood because I don't read this type of genre a lot. It's literally, I think, been years since I've read another book like this. So I feel like I should do it while the mood is here. And that is The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. I don't read YA anymore. Like, I haven't read a YA in, I think, actual years. But I do have quite a few YAs that I do want to read. So I'm like, I kind of want to start this journey back into YA with this one because, like, I'm really in the mood for it and everybody has been really, really enjoying it. So I'm just like, I should start here. This should be, like, my, my intro back into YA. But this edition is from Evernight. It's the Evernight Exclusive Edition. It's so gorgeous. Um... It's so sunny. I love this little creepy cottage in the background. And then it has these really cool sprayed edges. It's kind of hard to see, but it's like a skeleton. How cool is that? Um, it is a signed edition. So we have signature. And then it has really gorgeous end papers and a really gorgeous naked book. So this is the naked book. It's so pretty. And then these are the end papers. It's very, it's very, very beautiful. So yeah, I, I do want to read this because again, I have this really pretty special edition. Heard people reading like passages from this book and I feel like the writing style, like Crystal Sutherland's writing style is going to be right up my alley because I really like horror that is like very descriptive 
and it is like a little bit flowery but like flowery in a sense that it's like very like dark disturbing flowery writing kind of in the same vein as like billy martin or eric la Roca, like that type of horror writing where it's like flowery in a sense but the flowery is like really really gross descriptors i love that type of writing style and i think that this book might do exactly that so i really want to read it and again a lot of people have been really enjoying it and i want to i want to jump on the train i want to jump on the hype train and see if i like it too so we're gonna try and do these two books for this vlog and i'm very excited i literally really want to read this so i'm gonna seize the opportunity i'm gonna seize the mood reading vibe right now hitting that i want to read the invocations and just kind of follow my follow my dreams follow my dreams so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna start paradise rot as well and i will give you guys updates once i actually get into the reading yesterday i did start reading paradise rot um i got i'm on page 88 um and <laughs> honestly i got bored i should have finished this last night but i got bored that's not <laughs> That's not ideal. That's not what I thought was going to be happening when I read Paradise Rot. This book essentially is following a Norwegian transfer student, transfers into a school in somewhere in England, UK area. It's almost like the book is told in like snippets of this character's day. So it just kind of jumps through time as it just follows this character. And it's mostly focused on their relationship with their roommate and I get where like the queer sexual awakening is coming from like I see it throughout the story but at the same time like it's relatively boring because like nothing really is happening. Like, I do enjoy like mundane moments but the way that this was pitched being a horror I was expecting I don't know like something um, to start developing because we're literally past the 50% mark. I literally have this much left of the book. So I thought by this point, something would be happening. I was expecting something a little bit more intense, transgressive, disturbing when it came to the horror and like the sexual awakening, the queer sexual awakening. Um, but everything so far has just been very slow, just describing a lot of things that happen. And I feel like the writing could be something that I really like. But it doesn't like fully go all the way like there are some lines that i'm like oh that's really pretty but like not enough to be like oh yeah the writing style on this is like really beautiful does that make sense like it's all feeling very like it could almost be there but it's not which is really sad because i was really excited about this one um and also they p p comes up a lot like p is a lot in this book which is so interesting that that's like the hyper focus is like P. <laughs> like of all the things it could be, P. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if like golden showers gets thrown in here at one point. Like I'm not even joking. But yeah, I did get bored so I did end up finishing it last night. But I will finish it today. But honestly, it's feeling very mid. It's feeling like a three star. Um, which is sad because I really wanted this to be a five star. But honestly, it hasn't really gripped me and nothing about the story has really like been impactful for me um i'm gonna finish this up today and see what i think um but yeah unfortunately so far i'm not like super impressed and i'm not like super obsessed with this at all like it is feeling very like low three stars and if it continues in this way like if there is like actually no horror towards the end i will <laughs> bump my rating down uh, but so far it's a three um a hopeful three that the ending is disgusting in some way and that we get some more horror um but we will see what happens so that's gonna be it i will update you guys once i'm done with paradise rot hey guys so i finished paradise rot today and i wanted to give you guys an update on it um so yes here's the book i finished paradise rot and i ended up giving it two stars this was unbelievably boring literally <laughs> honestly kind of annoyed that this is called a horror what is so horrifying about it is it the p is that the horrifying thing <laughs> because if p was gonna be horrifying i feel like there should have been like way more there should have been way more p mold plant whatever something disgusting and then 
something this book did is something that I find I really hate in books that are centering queerness. Sorry if you can hear the kids outside. I hate when this one specific thing happens in a lot of like queer books, um, especially queer books that follow like sapphic relationships. That shit <laughs> pisses me off. I can't say what it is because I think it would be a spoiler. And also this book centered men a little bit too much for my taste. Like honestly, I could have done without one of the characters in this book ever showing their face. I think I would have enjoyed this book so much more if this one male character had never set foot into this story. Honestly, I hated them in this story and like the focus they took. And I get like that it might be used as a kind of like, um, as a kind of like a way to like show queerness and and go against this man to show queerness but to me i hate when stories do that like i don't think you need a man to solidify your queerness does that make sense like i don't think anybody that is queer doesn't like men or doesn't want any relationships when it comes to men i don't think they need to have a relationship with a man to know that so i don't think they're necessary for queer stories I just don't like them. I don't think they should be in it. And I really didn't think he should to be in it. I really could have gone the whole book without him being in it. He was so fucking annoying. Every, oh my God, anytime he was in it, I was like, shut up. Like I wanted to just, you know. <laughs> but aside from that, the story was just really boring and I didn't enjoy any of it. Like I had mentioned before, the writing style, I could see where it might evolve into like as this writer writes more like I could see where this writing style could go and I could see myself enjoying it in future books when the writing style is a little bit better than what it was here because I feel like the writing style wasn't that great but like I, I could see the idea and I could see where the writing style could be so you know that didn't really pull me in the writing style didn't pull me in I thought it was going to be way more transgressive than it was um, there's definitely, like, <laughs> no horror in here, honestly. Like, the horror of, like, having to s sit through a man's book. <laughs> like, I would, I would consider that the horror, the most horrific part, because reading that was horrifying. Uh, but aside from that, like, I don't know, I just, I don't know, I didn't really enjoy it. You know, it was like, a, it was a bore to read, to be honest. And I was kept waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for, like, you know, the shoe to drop or the... The horror to really start and i don't know nothing really came of it i wanted more like plant stuff more mushroom stuff honestly i would have taken more pee at this point like it was just so meh <laughs> it was just this was not it for me so sadly did not enjoy paradise rot i don't know if i would read anything else by this author but you never know maybe if they do something that's a little bit more not quiet horror but just straight up horror and i honestly would hesitate to consider this horror to be honest um so yeah finish paradise rock next book i want to read for this vlog is going to be the invocations i'm very excited about this one i think i'm going to start it today after my yoga class and i will let you guys know how i feel i feel like this will be really easy to read because it is ya and i feel like ya is a lot easier to read so i'm very excited I hope I love it um, but yeah I will update you guys with this once I actually get into it um, I have to go I will update you guys a little bit later
guys so today is Wednesday and yesterday I did end up starting the invocations by Crystal Sutherland and I got to page 39 chapter 4 um, so this is where I'm at and I'm really enjoying oh my god <laughs> tabs fell I'm really enjoying it so far um, there was this line that I think was just like I read it and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna like this book. Her eyes find the figure immediately, standing stationary on the path. He's a slip of a shadow, nothing more, no face, no weapon, nothing to indicate that he might do her harm, just a man. But she is a girl and she is alone and it is night and that is enough. I was like, oh my God, that's on page four. I was like, wait, that's, that's literally magnificent. Like, <laughs> it's so good. There's so many good lines. In here about things like that there is another one that I really liked um, men do not walk alone on dark streets and think about fingers closing around their throats or their skulls thudding dully against the pavement they do not think about strangers coming to their house and slaughtering their entire family Emma likes to find them where they sit or stand or walk comfortable unafraid because there is no need to fear if you are a man you own the darkness it is your space and I was just like that's absolutely correct, like correct, but also just so beautiful in the way that it's written. So I am excited to see where this is gonna go. So far we've just met like the three main characters. We're learning kind of like what circumstances they find themselves in. And um, I am excited to see how their paths cross because I think there is like a serial killer element that ties these women together. I'm really excited to see how they all kind of like collide with each other. I am tabbing it. Um, I don't know if that's like scandalous because it has a spray edge, but I am tabbing it. I'm just putting the tabs really like, I don't think you can see them, but like I'm trying to put them as close to the edge of the page as possible so that they just stick out a little bit. But because there are some very beautiful lines, like I just can't not tab them. So I am tabbing. Um, we'll see how it looks when I finish it and how the taps interact with the sprayed edge because I do think that sometimes it can look really pretty but we will see I'm choosing colors that are very muted so that there's not like super bright colors in here so hopefully it looks good but yeah that's where I'm at with the invocations I am going to continue reading it um and yeah I'm very excited so started that I do have some work that I have to do but at the same time it's also a pretty chill day today Work-wise, so I'm going to actually work on my reading journal and work on my Old School April um, prompts because I have been participating in Old School April loosely um, just because I've been so busy and <laughs> it's really sucks because I'm so excited for this readathon. It just feels like I don't have time to like participate in the way that I want. So today I was like, I'm going to get my shit together and I'm going to start making some spreads for Old School April. So I printed out all the reading prompts um, I printed out the watching prompts and also the activity prompts and I'm gonna put them all in my reading journal and just do a little spread for them and then start cataloging the books so I how many books have I read six five one two three four five five books this month so I'm gonna start going through the prompts seeing how I can fit them and then um, start submitting them for old school April so that's what I do today um, and yeah I'm very excited I also really want to get some reading done for my other vlog so that's also going to be something I focus on as well um, but yeah <laughs> I'm just gonna try and be really efficient today and do a lot of things that I've been meaning to do but haven't gotten around to doing and old school April reading spread is one of them because I want to log my books and just like participate and have fun with everybody so that's what I'm gonna do um, so yeah I will show you guys my reading spread once I'm done with it and you know I'll, I'll go through my books for old school April and see how many points I have um, but yeah that's the plan for today um, and I will update you guys a little bit later Friday. I did a good chunk of reading of The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. I got to page 183. So I'm like about 40% into the book. Whoops. 
And so far, I'm really enjoying it. There are some things I don't like. The main thing being the references to like modern things like TikToks, movies, shows um, that keep getting mentioned. And I really just don't like it because first of all, it's irrelevant to the story. It's just put in there to kind of like remind you that this is taking place in modern time, in our time, but I don't feel like they're necessary because just like the way that these uh, girls interact, the way they speak, like it's like very obvious that it's modern. You don't really need the references to kind of date it for you. Um, but yeah, I just, that's one of my like pet peeves for books. Like I really hate when like social media things become very important plot points to this. In this case, it's not, but just like any mention of it, it just really takes me out of the story for some reason. I just really don't like it. It's just one of those things that I really don't like in books, which is why I would never read a book about like an influencer or like a YouTuber, like all things like that just put me off. I don't want to read things like that. But aside from that, I am really enjoying the story. I'm enjoying where it's going. We have met up the three girls, like they have met up and they are starting to work on this investigation as to who is killing these women. I think my favorite thing about this book so far is that unlike a lot of witchy books that for some reason put a really big emphasis on the power coming from the womb and the womb is the power for women. I hate that. It makes me so uncomfortable which is why I don't really like a lot of witchy books but this one is actually has nothing to do with like womanhood in that sense that a lot of people equate women with like uteruses. The book mainly is focusing on the relationship between men and women in society and the dangers that men are to women based on the society that we live in now. And I really really like that because I think it's a very like relevant story to tell and why these women become witches is in response to these situations with men trying to find power it by any means because you have been powerless for so long because of the relationships that you have had with men so i really like that that's kind of like what turns people into witches i really like that i think it's very well done and i am really enjoying the way this story is being told so because they've already met up i feel like now we're really gonna get into like the investigation and a little bit more action because i did feel like there was a little bit of a lull from like 50 to like 100 pages um where they were just kind of like going through each of the person's like um motivations but i didn't really think we needed like 100 pages of it like i feel like from the beginning switching from the three povs like just from like the first like 50 pages i understood everybody's motivations like it didn't really need to be dragged out that much but now that they've met up i do feel like the story is going to pick up and again we do have this like romance that is forming as well and then we just have like this whole serial killer woman hating ass <laughs> like thing that's going on which i'm really excited to see how that basically gets resolved who it is th that is doing this um, I do have some theories as to who I think could be like behind this. Uh, so I think it'll be really interesting to see who is the person that's doing all these terrible things to these women. Depending on how I feel about this book, I would be interested in reading, I think it's House of Hollow, I think, by, is that the one with the flowers? Uh, I think it follows three sisters who went missing and then they like show up, but then like one of the sisters goes missing, something along those lines. I think I would also really enjoy that because I love stories when it comes to sister dynamics because I have sisters so I find them really relatable and I really enjoy stories with sisters so if I like this I will be interested in reading House Apollo as well. This week I think is like circle week at Target and they have a deal where it's buy two books and get a third book free and I mean honestly I needed I could not pass up on the deal I could not so I went to Target today and I got some books. I feel like two of these are very like outside of my comfort zone like I don't read books like this but I am like really excited about them and I feel like they're very thematic that I'm reading the invocations I think maybe this reading this book did kind of put me in the mood to pick these up so the first one I got is is the familiar by Lee Bardugo look at this it's so pretty it's so pretty and papers with these pomegranates I think is just stunning and this cover is just so gorgeous but i literally don't know what this is about at all is it about witches magic something like that 
interesting um but yeah so i picked this up i'm very excited to check this out i do have to read um ninth house by this by lee barduga as well the only book by lee barduga i read is six of crows and i read that a really long time ago but i do have ninth house that i want to read by lee barduga and obviously the familiar by lee barduga as well so i picked that up and then i also picked up starling house by alex e harrow i heard a lot of people really loving this unfortunately this copy has this stupid fucking permanent sticker i didn't realize it but it was buy two get one free so like i can't really complain too much but whatever um it is a modern gothic fantasy i think it's following this haunted house and i think like the haunted house has like sentience almost so i'm very excited i do love when we have that in houses just being kind of like a, another character if that makes sense so i'm excited to read that and then i got this because i know everybody's been loving it and i want to get into it and that is butcher and blackbird by Bryn Weaver. This is like a serial killer romance, I think. I will be reading this as well, so I'm super excited. I got, um, I feel like these two kind of have similar vibes, you know? Um, and then we just got like serial killer <laughs> romance, um, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, I picked up these three books for the Target sale. Honestly, that Target wasn't like super well stocked, so actually probably a good thing because my wallet did not need to be doing that. But you know what, like if I didn't buy the books, it was like I'm losing money because like I didn't take advantage of the sale. <laughs> so that's it. I'm going to go continue reading the invocations and I will update you guys a little bit later once I have more of this read. Hey guys, so it is Saturday night and I have finished reading the invocations by Crystal Sutherland. I ended up giving this four stars. I really enjoyed my time with his book. Um, and there was this line that I was like teetering at like a 3.5 for the majority of the book but I feel like this one specific line really sold me on a four star for this because my biggest problem with this book is mainly that I feel like I liked where it was going but like I kind of do wish that it had gone a little bit deeper into the issue i feel like i would have really appreciated a little more nuance a little bit more discussion on the topics that are being covered but at the same time i'm like okay this is a ya so i wanted to like make sure that i was adjusting my expectations accordingly because this is a ya book and i don't really read a lot of ya anymore so i didn't want to have my expectations set to like a different standard if that makes sense like i do try to adjust expectations for every type of genre that I read and because this is the first YA book that I read in a really really long time I didn't want to be too harsh because it's a YA. Does that make sense? Not that that like not that YA is bad or that it can't be criticized or anything but like I just wanted to make sure that I was adjusting my expectations accordingly because it had been a while since I read a YA book but um when I think back to like other YA books that I have read in my life, this is like way, way, way better. So I just wanted to make sure that I was rating this accordingly. So I do feel like I wanted a little bit more depth from the story um, because I really liked the conversations that were happening in this. The other thing that I wasn't like a super huge fan of was the romance that happens in this. There is a sapphic romance in this. I just feel like it moved a little bit too fast for me. Like they just like, start liking each other out of nowhere um but it's also like i feel like YA always has like a romance included so again i was just like adjusting expectations it wasn't my favorite but i was like i did like them together i just wish i gone a little bit slower but i do really like their dynamic the themes that this book covers i really really enjoyed i find them very relevant very interesting and i just feel like the writing style also really just sold this for me because it's just so good <laughs> Um, and it's not like an overly flowery writing style because that's personally something I don't really, really like. But like the way that Crystal Sutherland writes some lines, they're just so powerful, impactful, but also like simple. Um, and I just really enjoyed it. My favorite line, the one that I was telling you guys that really like bumped this up to a four star for me was a man with everything wealth good health access to education still is not enough for him still he felt hard done by still he had to take more and i'm just like <laughs> that's so that's so fucking true like the accuracy of that is just 
Oh, it's magnificent. Um, and then there was this other line that I really, really liked as well. You do not get to look away because it's unbearable. You do not get to shield your eyes or nose from the grim reality of the violence that is wreaked upon women every day. Look, look at what was done to your sister. So I just really, really liked the writing and the lines. I just thought they were so impactful. Just really, really enjoyed Crystal Sullivan's writing. Um, and I did like the three girls. I did like some storylines better than others. Um, but overall, I did like the relationship. I liked where it went and I liked where the story went. Um, if a little bit predictable at times, but I still really liked the conversation that was this was doing. And again, I really liked that this book that centers witches doesn't ever, ever make a reference to wombs and uteruses and i feel like i appreciate that so 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 much um so yeah there is also a line in here that does talk about trans women as well really really enjoyed this um i did tab it i don't feel like the tabs ruin the design like you can still see the design it's just kind of like when you move it around you know you can see them but i think just straightforward it looks fine um, but yeah, I really enjoyed this and I will be interested in looking into more books by Crystal Sutherland, specifically House of Hollow, because I feel like a lot of people really, really like that one. So I would be interested in checking that one out. So that's going to be my final reading update for this vlog. This was the final book that I wanted to finish and I need to get this video edited and uploaded for tomorrow. But before I leave, I did want to let you guys know that... Escape the Readathon is back in May. I am so excited and I am lucky enough to be a co-host this year again and I am going to be co-hosting with Kelsey for Film Crew. Film Crew is back. We won last year. We're definitely going to win this year and if you want to join us on Film Crew, please go check out Lexi's video. I will leave her channel and the video announcement link down below. Um, but yes, it is a readathon happening all of May and you should definitely join the best team, the winning team, the reigning champs <laughs> with Film Crew. Um, I'm so, so excited about it. It is such a fun readathon. It is a competitive team-based readathon. And this year we are going to the Black Cat Carnival. <laughs> Look at these tickets. Um, so these beautiful, beautiful bookmarks were designed by Lexi and each one is for a specific team. This orange one is specifically for film crew. Sorry, they're backwards. They are like ticket stubs. So this is p the puppet show, the Ferris wheel, dunk tank, and food court. Each one represents each team and they're just absolutely gorgeous. Like just <laughs> so, so, so beautiful. Um, I don't know if Lexi still has bookmarks in stock because obviously they sold out because obviously they are fucking gorgeous. But um, if you do want to participate in this readathon, I will leave the announcement and everything linked down below. So yeah, I just really wanted to show these off because they're absolutely gorgeous. And I don't want to talk about the readathon in case you haven't seen the Instagram or the YouTube videos or anything. I will leave everything linked in the description. So make sure you join us. I'm so, 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 so stoked for May. It's going to be so much fun. So if you made it to the end of this video and you just want to say hello, you can leave me a film camera emoji for film crew, of course. And if you will be participating in Escape the Readathon, please let me know down below uh, what team are you joining. So that's going to be it for me. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to keep up with more content for me, and I will see you guys in my next video.